The first reading on this Reformation Sunday comes from the book of Revelation, the 14th chapter. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson comes from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the third chapter. Now, we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just, and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Jesus is speaking. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to their playmates. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us stand for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be righteous in your sight, O Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The Gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. This is given to us by grace, a free gift, not to be tied to works or acts or anything else that you or I might do. It is through grace that salvation has come. Please be seated. I ought to have had in my manuscript here something about what today is because it's of, of significance. And yet many of you probably do not know. The Reformation began on October 31st, 1517. 
when Luther nailed upon the door of the Wittenberg church his 95 theses. He wasn't trying to start a fight. He wasn't trying to start a new church body. He wasn't trying to break away from Rome. He just wanted to have a discussion about some of the things that he saw were in disagreement with the Scriptures. But 1517, October 31st, is when we consider the Reformation beginning in that act. And that was, well, tomorrow, 499 years ago. Which means we're beginning the 500th year of the Reformation. It's 500 years since Luther did that work. And so as 2017 goes on, you're going to see many and various events happening in the thumb, in the church body, in the area, reflecting what it is that Luther began with the Reformation and the results that were for us, the understanding of Scripture in Scripture alone, by faith alone, by grace alone. I didn't have that in my manuscript, and I felt that I should make you aware of that, even though time is fleeting today. Gifts are marvelous things. Luther gave us the gift of the, soul, the three solas, the understanding of our faith through God's Word. And gifts are marvelous things, most of the time, most of the time. And gifts are given by grace. I'm not talking about thank you gifts. Things which are given out of a appreciation for something that somebody else has done. I'm, I'm talking about gifts that are freely given out of pure grace. Yeah, birthday gifts. Christmas gifts. Anniversary presents. Baptismal remembrances. Gifts that are given simply because. Given simply out of love and grace for one another. It is in this same way that you have received the gift of the forgiveness of sins. It is this simple gift which has freed you from sin, death, and hell. Made you a child of God as we just did with Ellery moments ago. Not our work, but God's work. It's been granted to you by grace, through faith, salvation. Though there is nothing on your part to receive gifts like this, they are not given without a price. They have a cost. The sweater or shawl that was given to you Somebody took the time to labor over it and knit it, stitch it together. The quilt, the pattern quilt that was laid out and patterned and cut and then stitched together. Even store-bought toys or gifts, which are paid for with the earnings of the laborer, purchased at a cost which was not your own to bear. To call a a gift free, even a free gift, free, is narrow-sighted. It lacks an understanding. In our text today, Jesus says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who has come. He who has ears, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven, the word, the church, the people of God, suffer violence for the sake of this gift of grace. God's word does not stand unopposed in this world. Truth is never without opposition. The people of God who believe, teach, and confess the Lord and His kingdom live in persecution in this world. They, we, are attacked for declaring this word of forgiveness and grace. Elijah is persecuted by King Ahab and the worshipers of Baal. Even to the point where he flees for his life when Ahab has put all the other prophets to death. In the text before us, John the Baptist is imprisoned 
for proclaiming the sins of the king. And John will be beheaded because the queen hates him. Paul is imprisoned and beaten many times over for proclaiming the free gift of grace to all who believe. Even Luther is not desiring a battle, but ends up with the princes seeking his head, seeking to kill him for what he's proclaiming, this free gift. All for what all this is done for what we call a free gift. What you receive is a free gift. A free gift for you, but purchased at a price. Ultimately, the price was the death of the Lord of life. The God man Jesus nailed to the cross and suffering death to gain life for you. But God will not be mocked. For sin, God demands sacrifices of blood. For our sins, for the sins of all who came before us, for sins of all who came before Christ, for all sins, God demands blood. All the animal sacrifices of the patriarchs and of the temple priests are but a foreshadowing of what was to come upon the cross in the body and blood of Christ. The one sacrifice, the one blood sacrifice, the one payment, the one price paid for your sins, such that you might receive then this free gift of grace, free for you, but purchased at a price. To expect or think that you might be able to pay for this yourself, to think that anything you could do would merit this gift is a violence, a violence that seeks to tear Christ from the cross and make his sacrifice that he made for you meaningless. It is as if you would pay for your birthday gift so that you might be given the gift and then it's no longer a gift freely given but bought. The world, our sinful nature, our sinful flesh, it despises the very idea of a free gift of salvation. We know that this gift that we receive by the death of Christ is greater than anything that we deserve. We know that we do not merit the very body of the God-man Jesus Christ broken, the very blood of the God-man Jesus Christ shed for you. We don't deserve it. And so the flesh struggles violently against such proclamation. Fights against simply receiving this gift graciously. We desire to participate. We want to play a role in our salvation. We want to do something. And this is what Luther struggled against. This is what Luther taught against. This is what Luther railed against, even in his own flesh. The church of Luther's time had created a system of works by which one had to earn their salvation. It removed baptism as a means of pure grace by which the body of Christ, into which we enter into the body of Christ, as Ellery did today, and made it a first step in a long process of getting to salvation. A long process by which we earn our way into heaven. But that's not the way that Christ taught it. That's not the way the Scriptures teach salvation. It is not the way that God had given this gift, given it to us. Little Ellery, this, this very day, received the gift of justification. She now stands before God, forgiven of her sins, just as you and I have been. Not by anything that she has done yet or anything that you have done, but by grace alone. St. Paul writes, For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. And this is how we receive it. By faith. 
It's faith that grasps a hold of this grace. It's faith that clings to the feet of Christ upon the cross. Not our faith, but the faith that's bestowed upon us in baptism so that His Holy Spirit working in us might reach out and grab that and crucify our flesh just as His flesh was crucified. Might struggle against our desire to participate and so say, no, get thee behind me, Satan. Simply receive the gift you've been given, the blood of Christ. You can't do anything to earn it. You can't do anything to earn your birthday gift. You can't do anything to, to earn your anniversary gift. Although sometimes I feel like I might. But when you receive a gift, you do respond to that gift. Not because your response earns you anything, but because you are gracious and thankful for the gift that you have received. You have received the greatest gift that anyone could ever give you. The promise of the forgiveness of sins in Christ Jesus. This gift has been given to you freely, without any merit or worthiness on your part. There's nothing better though, and there's nothing that you can do to get this. And it is the only thing that is truly necessary in this life. So respond. So then out of love, out of love for Him who did this for you, respond in thankfulness. Your response is to forgive and serve others. Remember our prayer that we pray, the Lord's Prayer as He taught us? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. To pray that prayer is to say that you have been forgiven just as by Christ, and so there's no reason you cannot forgive another. Out of love. Out of the love that Christ has shown us. Because Christ has rendered to you, and so you render unto Him thanks. You come to worship to be served again and again this gift of grace. Not because you have to, but because you want to receive that gift of grace. You want to be reminded of what He's done for you. You need to be reminded. Your flesh needs to know what it is that Christ has done for you. And because you desire to be near Him, to hear His Word, to sit at table with Him, and to give thanks and praise for all that He has done for you. You read His Word, both here in church and at home, in your daily life, and you study it, because this He has commanded you. You pray for the guidance and the protection, the peace that comes only from Him, as a free gift, by grace, and then you go forth and you proclaim, you speak this truth that you have been given in the face of violence and hatred in this world. And I'll tell you what, today, if you don't think there's violence and hatred for that truth, then you haven't picked up a newspaper or heard the radio or watched the television or checked your feet on Facebook. Because Christian persecution is occurring everywhere, especially those that hold to Scripture alone. So you go forth and you proclaim this truth in the world. For you believe, confess, and trust that in Jesus Christ all things have been done for you. And on that, you can stand just as Luther stood and said, I can do no more. Through His grace, through the free gift of grace purchased by the price of His life and His blood, salvation has come for you. A free gift received in faith and trusting in Him to guard and keep you from this day now and forevermore. God grant it to you for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now may that peace which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.